In this episode, once again, we're speaking to the female money doctor, Dr. Nikki Ramskill. Dr. Nikki is a certified money coach and runs an award-winning blog, thefemalemoneydoctor.com, and the only doctor to be featured on the top 25 20, top 25 feed, uh, feed spot list of personal finance blogs in the UK and highlighted in the Plum's top five personal finance blogs for female financial independence. And in today's episode, Dr. Nikki shares with us or asks us, what is your money personality? Let's find out. Welcome, welcome. This is Gul Khan, your money mindset expert. And today, once again, we have the amazing, we have the wonderful Dr. Nikki. Welcome, Dr. Nikki. Hi, thanks for having me again. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming again, Dr. Nikki. We had such a fantastic conversation with you, especially because you're a money coach too, um, but from a different angle, which is amazing. Um, but we did have a fantastic conversation on Friday Future, so we had to have you back. So Dr. Nikki, everyone's heard your intro. They know how amazing you are, but please, in your own words, tell everybody what it is that you do. So I am a medical doctor, so I'm a GP. Um, that's my kind of day job, if you like. And I also run a, as a money coach. So I help women in particular feel better about their finances. Fabulous, fantastic. And so today's topic is what is your money personality? So I've heard this phrase before, but for, for clarity's sakes, and for those of you listening for the first time, explain what do you mean by money personality? So one of the things I did as a money coach was train with a woman called Kendall Summerhawk. And she has come up with this amazing system called the Sacred Money Archetypes, which you may or may not have come across. Um, but essentially, one of the things that she says is how we do money is how we do everything. So mm -hmm. when you understand how you have been behaving with your finances based on your personality type, you can then start to make changes that are in alignment for who you are. And you can also start to kind of borrow the experiences of other personality types to achieve something that you want to achieve. So it's all about being in flow with, mm -hmm. with who you are and not trying to be something that you're not essentially. Okay. Okay. That sounds interesting. So let's, let's go through. So, um, so how many per money personalities are there? So there, she says there are eight of them. Okay. And what happens is three of them in particular, any one point in your life is going to have an impact on how you're doing things at that time. Okay. I, I believe they can change. So mm -hmm. when you're younger, you might take on the personality type of one of your caregivers. Mm -hmm. But actually, as you learn more, as you get older, you might shed that one and another one that's more natural to you comes up. Or when you have kids, it might change. Or when your kids mm -hmm. leave home, it might change. So there's all sorts of um, ways that I think this can adapt. But there's always going to be one or maybe two that are particularly strong that don't tend to change. Okay. So when I first did mine, um, I found out that I was a maverick ruler nurturer. Mm. Then as I was doing more and more things around money, I became a maverick ruler accumulator and the nurturer was pushed down to number four. And that's purely because I started to understand my worth. I started to understand money and how to save and how to invest. And it, it brought up that level for me but maverick has always been my strongest one and the maverick is somebody who tends to jump from thing to thing takes risks with you know which is probably the reason why I got myself into so much debt if you've heard my story around that one um they make really good entrepreneurs I think as well because you need to be able to take risk and be okay with that so maverick, that's what mavericks are really strong with so they don't mind learning to invest for the first time they don't mind starting off a business they don't mind jumping into stuff um, and they tend to go against the grain a little bit because they don't want to be conventional. So it's it has been a real eye opening experience for me to learn about it so much so that I really wanted to teach others. So that's that's why I did the, the coach training. OK, fantastic. So so one of them is Maverick. So that's what you just explained. OK, yeah. what's the second type? So um, I'm just going to rattle them all off. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I think so. so yeah. I, basically, I talked about ruler being my second one. So rulers are people who are very ambitious. Mm -hmm. So again, the business owners, the people that are in a career, you, you're trying to get up the ladder. You're trying to achieve something. You've got a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is sometimes you find it difficult to switch off constantly thinking about work all the time mm. constantly doing work all the time and actually feeling guilty about taking time out for yourself so one of the things the rulers really have to remember is 
one, celebrate everything that you achieve. And two, take some time out, actually have some holidays, actually have time out in your day to exercise, eat properly, you know, whatever it is. Um, so there's no surprise really that being a doctor and then being a money coach, probably yourself as well as a lawyer and a money coach, mm-hmm. there'll be some ruler element. To yeah, that of course. Yeah, I could, I could, I could, I could connect with both, both Maverick yeah. and yeah, ruler. Yeah, yeah, that's it exactly. Um, and then my third one, um, I may as well stick with that. So the accumulator is somebody who's very good at saving money, mm-hmm. really good at. Um, checking all the deals you know that if you want to know whether or not you're getting a good deal speak to an accumulator they'll help you they'll have all the knowledge on coupons you know my my partner he is an accumulator and he drives me potty when we are looking at things that like we, we were walking around the supermarket just the other day and he was standing there analyzing the price of razors that he wanted to buy because he thought he could buy them cheaper somewhere else mm. and it, it drives me nuts so i just want him to put things in the supermarket trolley so we can go and leave the shop but he he wants to analyze it all so that's fine that's his process i have to be respectful of that they'd ha- they hate the idea of being in debt so mm. accumulators you you very rarely will get an accumulator in debt and if they have got themselves in debt there's usually there's usually a backstory to it there's something mm. bad that's happened or a relationship that's gone wrong or whatever that's got them into it so accumulators really panic when they take on loans and things um and then beyond that we had the nurturer that said that was my number four so nurturers are um people who love giving to others mm. so I love supporting them they don't have to be parents they don't have to be you know having children or anything but they might be a business owner that wants to really overgive. Mm. so they'll over give their time they'll, they'll over give discounts they won't have boundaries with yeah things. this is this is this this is yeah. something that's ringing bells with me at the moment and i found and i'm just going to interject here and it's a lesson that i've learned and we'll, we'll come back to this, but I thought it was interesting to make, for me to highlight it. So I have um, this mastermind and we give a certain amount of, because I don't do one-to-ones, but I give a certain amount, I've started doing a certain amount of, of one-to-ones um, now after the, uh, we put the price up and I, I did some, some one-to-ones because people needed it. But there are people from before who come in and I, they didn't pay for it. It wasn't part of the package, but I felt that they needed some extra time. And yeah. out of my goodness, I gave them time. And uh, what I found is, and I think it's the universe telling me stop doing that because the people that I helped the most, um, who I gave free time to the most, actually were the ones who were the most troublesome clients. The most mm. troublesome clients. The most recent one is somebody who I um, helped and the individual has turned around of a completely unrelated matter and has, has literally really, really spoiled the relationships to, to the point where I never, I don't want to even respond to this individual. I had to get my, I said, please just, just respond to this person. And um, I said, look, I've given him one, I've given six one-to-ones, which I shouldn't have given, whatever else, no more. And that would trigger, trigger the person even further. And it just, it, the, the relationship went down the hill. But when you over give, you are harming yourself. And I'm, I want to tell people who are, because a lot of people listening to this will be the nurturers, will be the, you know, the empaths, will be the ones who want to over give please please do not mm. have your boundaries and i've learned this from now on i'm going to be very strict we only offer um you know four heart, um, one-to-one sessions with me over the course of 12 months anybody anyone who wants above that will have to pay the fee and you know it doesn't matter what the situation is i i, I will not be doing it because you have to lay down boundaries but mm. I, I so relate to that because I, I went above and beyond and it was actually two people who went, wouldn't really went above and beyond they literally came back and attacked me for whatever, completely different matter. Completely different. Him was completely matter, but the other person was somebody else uh, for another thing. So I think this is something that you have to be careful for. And you can be like, a, a, I probably am a maverick and I am a, I'm definitely a ruler, but I'm also that nurturer. So that then I harmed myself. I harmed my business. And it also made me think like, I was being, what did I do wrong? You, you question mm-hmm. yourself. Don't you? Like, I was being nice. Why were you being horrible when I'm being nice? So yeah, I just, yeah, completely. And and the other way of looking at it as well is when you are over giving, actually mm. for some people that's really overwhelming. Mm. And while I mean I've that's a lesson that I still have to learn because I want to give so much to people to help them with their finances, but actually it ends up turning people off because they they feel that they're failing before they've even got started. So mm. it's you're always gonna give value. You're never gonna not or, give value. Or sometimes I'm oh, sorry, sometimes you interrupt sometimes they have their own issues which they, they point on to you so I remember the first person who was very difficult um and she said to me because I gave her for her I gave her and she, with her there was no element of one point on and I gave her um 
you know, quite a few. She said she felt icky that she got special treatment and she got the one-to-ones, but nobody else did. Mm. I didn't know what to say to that. <laughs> what, yeah. what do I say to that? Because they, she wasn't able to receive yeah. um, the additional help for free. Um, and she felt awkward that she got that. And, and even though she needed it, she got that others did not. And so this is this is something else. It, it may not be you. It's that other person's inability to receive from you, which can cause the relationship to collapse as well. That's, that's it. Yeah. And that, and that's another thing that nurturers need to learn. It's it's being OK with receiving rather than always giving because we have yeah. to close our, our loops. You know, we can't just keep giving all the time. Yeah. Because you we we deserve fair and equal um exchange for what we do yeah. so if you don't close the loop it's just this constant out all the time but actually we need in otherwise you just get burnt out and you yeah. feel you just don't want to do it anymore and it, yeah. it just becomes a complete burden because it's not what why are you doing it you're you're doing it with the love of love of your free time okay fine it's, it's an expensive hobby then isn't it it's not mm. an actual business so yeah it's something that i definitely still I'm working on myself, but you know, I've got a lot better with it over time. So it can be changed, but don't don't listen to the people that say, Oh, you need to start charging huge amounts of money. No, <laughs> charge what energetically feels good for you. And it might make you feel a little bit sick when you do it because it's a little bit more than perhaps you're doing now. But even if it's just 10%, 15%, it's okay. People are gonna pay for it. And then there were the people that value it are gonna pay for it. Agreed. But when you actually then get to that level energetically you think right okay does this feel like a good level for me right now yes or no you know immediately if someone's paid for something and it was it was undercharged you know in your body that was oh I've got to deliver six sessions now for 300 pounds or whatever it is and that might feel like a really low amount of money to you and actually add on another 500 pounds might make you feel a little bit excited a little bit sick but when someone pays for it, it will make you feel amazing. So you don't, you just need to get a sense of where in your body does this kind of number lie. Mm. Um, and don't worry about it. Just put a number out and see what happens. And the people that want to work with you will work with you. So, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, so that's, that's number nurture. That, that's number four nurture. Okay. Number five. Yeah. So um, where have I got to? So connectors I'm going to talk about next. So connectors are people who are very good at connecting with people. So they understand who they can bring together. They kind of love that human interaction. They're just very good at that. You know, when you've got a connector in your life, because they go, oh, you should meet this person. And they literally will just go out of their way to kind of make things happen for you. Connectors, on the other hand, when you talk to them about money, they just go, wall up, no, thank you very much. I'd rather just somebody else deal with it. Mm. I don't want to have to deal with this myself. But when connectors understand that money is just like a person, you're just learning about how money works as you would how a person works so once you understand that you put a system in place and you're away and you don't have to outsource to other people to do your money for you like partners and stuff like that because you can do it yourself you know you don't have to be like an accumulator you can do it in your own way but you don't have to think it's this complicated thing it's not it's just like you would a person so that would be the connector um, and then you have the romantics. So romantics are the people who love spending money. They want to spend money on things that feel lovely, exotic, beautiful, beautiful fabrics. Uh, they don't like being told no, basically. So if you try and put a budget on a romantic, they'll just reject it immediately. So what, the only problem with romantics is if they don't underpin that with a strong financial foundation, they are spending money however they want to spend it and they're not necessarily doing it in a way that's sustainable and then they get themselves into debt i often see the romantic and the ruler as kind of opposites mm. so the ruler needs to teach the romantic to be a bit more grounded you know work a little bit you know actually put the, the work in to get that grounding and the romantics can teach the ruler to kind of switch off a little bit so it's you know if you've got a partner that feels like they're always spending and you're the one that's always working well why don't you partner up and actually learn from each other it's it's a really lovely um, collaboration that you can do there but yeah so romantics you can have your budget you can have your fun pot call it your romantic fund whatever it is the money that you can just splurge on whatever you want every single month as long as everything else is covered as well and think of it like that um the other spender is the celebrity spender. So celebrity spenders are not doing it because of ease and beauty and they just want life to be easy. They are doing it because they want status. So for mm. them, it's, 
I want the car and the house and I like the VIP experiences and I want it to feel luxury and I want everybody to know. <laughs> and it's it's not they're not doing it from a place of, well, I'm, you know, I'm big and important. And I want everyone to know this. They they just love that. They just love people paying attention to them. They love the feeling that they're having something that's exclusive or or, or whatever. So being a celebrity, again, like a romantic, you kind of almost need to understand that if you don't underpin it with a financial foundation, you're just going to be working to fund a lifestyle that you can't, can't afford. So it's, again, learning from some of the other archetypes and actually understanding that you can have your cake and eat it, but you also just need to make sure you've got that strong financial foundation. Because, I mean, how exclusive is it to suddenly be in you know the know about investment which most people don't and have a certain amount of money in your savings account which most people don't have that's that's a vip experience that you can have that's actually supporting you mm. um, and and the, the final one is the alchemists so alchemists are people who manifest so they're mm. really good at just making things happen so let's say they're trying to pay their rent and they haven't got enough money in the bank account they you know they're short suddenly money comes it might come from a job or an invoice or it might come from someone's paying back something they've got or they don't need rent paid at the particular time and you get a bit more time to, to find the money something happens and it just works and alchemists are really kind of it, it just looks so effortless and you know they don't realize they're doing it and people sometimes fear that when they realize they're doing it it goes away they're always going to have that ability it's just the issue with that is Flying by the seat of your pants is fun, but also really slow. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need to understand that if you can get that strong financial foundation in place, like an accumulator, it doesn't take away the essence from you. It doesn't make you an icky person because you've got money. It just makes you sensible with what you've got. And then you can still be your amazing alchemist self and help other people and change the world or whatever it is you want to do. Just, just having that balance in place. All right, so so this these are the the eight personalities. So just quickly run through them again. Yeah. We had um, Maverick, and Ruler. Then we had the yeah. Accumulator. Then the Nurturer. And then we had yep. Connector, Romantic, Alchemist, and Celebrity. So the last one was what? Um, Alchemist. Sorry, Celebrity Alchemist. Celebrity Al okay, Alchemist. Okay. Yeah. So these are these are the eight um, personality types. Now, when you were saying this, I I felt a little bit pink towards each one of them. Is that normal? Yes. So you have elements of each of these personalities in you. Yes. Yeah, every single person has got access to all eight of them. So you might be listening to me talking, going, oh, yeah, I did that. I do that as well. Oh, I've got to do that as well. But it's three in particular mm -hmm. that will have the biggest impact on how you do money right now. So you can actually do a quiz on my website to find out if you want mm -hmm. to do that. Um, and it gives you like a score for each of them. And then you go on to, to find out a bit more about your topmost one, because that's that's really important. Mm. What I teach people on you know in my community is, find out who you are first mm -hmm. look at what your strengths are and look at whether you've been playing to your strengths or your weaknesses and then align it to who you know what you're trying to achieve and if you need a bit of accumulator energy for whatever reason to start a budget or you need to learn a bit of romantic from a ruler um so you're a ruler and you need a bit of romantic you know any of those things can all be learned you can you can totally put those into your life as well you don't have to just rely on your money personality the topmost one but equally it's not about trying to change yourself so what i sometimes get is people say oh i really didn't want to be a celebrity that feels really bad why why am i a celebrity celebrate it it's amazing that's what you want to be absolutely mm. fine if you want to go and spend the money on things do it but take a leaf out of the accumulators book for example and actually have some money set aside for a rainy day or have some money set aside like a maverick would for investing or whatever it is to enable you to have the kind of lifestyle that you want right the way through your retirement as well. Why not? I mean, that's that's an extremely exclusive thing that you can do. I, I agree. So I'm what my what I'm understanding from from you right now is the first step is go and take this assessment, which mm -hmm. is on your website, and we'll have the link to that in the show notes. I go and take that test and the quiz and see what are your I mean you probably have elements of all the eight personalities then I'm, as you're going through it I picked up I'll have a tiny bit of that and I do have a tiny bit of that too but um uh, the one I don't probably have is probably um the, the uh you know 
I suppose it accumulated too because I do like to, I, I don't I like to value money but I, I don't have the patience to go through mm. but I have a cousin who does it and she's really really good and I, and I look at her and I'm like the amount of time you spend to save 50 quid I can make yeah. that you know you know I can make a thousand in an hour I'd rather just not waste it so I I, I put I put value time differently so I'm not really sure I think that's the only one that I, I couldn't connect with in that respect but I'm sure there's elements of that in here too so you you, you pick out your your dominant most dominant um traits that you are currently um show you know uh, are you know showcasing in your life at the moment and which are dictating how you treat and deal with money at the moment once you um see where you are it will give you an idea of why you are not saving or why you are so more you know inclined to save why you're not spending or why you're spending too much what your actual goals are and why your misalignment with your goals yeah so pick up what you where you are figure out your strengths work out what's missing so if you um if you want to save and but you don't you have your you know you don't have much of a uh, which one was it the the the, uh, the accumulator, accumulator so something. if you don't have, yeah if you don't have much accumulated energy there then you're not going to be a much of a saver so you need to maybe develop that or focus more on that so your goals can be aligned with that personality type and be able to do that if you want to be an entrepreneur and you don't have much maverick energy then maybe you know go and tune into that and get in alignment with becoming an entrepreneur and taking risks and so forth i think this this is a great way to figure out what stops you subconsciously because you we do we do act subconsciously and 95 or 95 percent of our actions are, are you know are sports of conscious anyway we don't take the um, active actions or conscious actions anyway so it makes sense how would someone for example if someone um is you know it's like oh my god and no wonder, you know, I'm I'm really without like a I'm accumulated now. I'm really bad at saving because I just can't be asked and da, da, da. So how do I go ahead and tune into the accumulator energy or tune into that uh, maverick energy? What's the process? How do we figure that out? Well, once we've worked, you know, once we once we've taken the quiz, we know we're doing X, Y, and Z, and we need to have these other qualities too. How do we go ahead mm -hmm. and instill those qualities in us? Yeah. So it's about learning about them. Okay. Yeah. So you can absolutely come and join my coaching group and go through it there. And I literally lay them all out. So you go, you can go through as many or as few of them as you want. Mm -hmm. And I also do um, enhancing exercises as well. So if there is something you want to bring more into your life, like the Maverick or the Accumulator, whoever, you watch that part of it. And then you actually do the, the kind of exercises around that, if you like. Mm -hmm. So it might be something like as an Accumulator, you would have a budget. So if you don't have a budget, that's what you need to go and do. Or as a romantic, you would be very happy to go and spend money, but you might be someone that really hates it. So what can you bring into your daily budget that will allow you to spend a little bit of something frivolously mm. and be okay with it? So you might have to adapt it based on your highest, most personality type. So for example, with an accumulator, they really might resist the idea of spending money on jewellery. But there was a lady in my community. I thought she was awesome. <laughs> she said, I've done it. I've spent money on myself on a pair of earrings. I was like, that's amazing. Well done. And she went, but I did it with a discount code. <laughs> so she did it in her way. Mm -hmm. but she spent money on something that for her was very frivolous, but she did it in a way that enabled her to still save money and still be true to who she was. So you don't have to completely get rid of who you are. Isn't that interesting? Because I, I, I maybe I'm that that person too. Because I, apart from cars, I'm not into anything frivolous when it comes to money. I, you know, mm. jewelry or anything. I like nice holidays, but then that, that's not for the celebrity says. It's because I like nice places and I like to take my kids to nice places. And what you just mentioned made me realize I, I when I was going to buy my daughter a gift. I, I said, okay, let's get you a gift. But then I purposely chose to buy gold for her because I know it'll go up in value. Mm. This is something that we do traditionally in our culture anyway. They buy lots of gold. She likes gold. I don't like gold. But I understand the reason why the the you know the community buys gold. It's, it's, it's an investment for women because in the olden days, this is the only investment that women know, which was buy and go accumulate gold from your parents and then also from your husband. That was your rainy day money, right? And back in the days. But it still can be a great investment because it, over time it does go up. And I thought if instead of buying my daughter anything like jewelry or whatever, I I'll, I'll get her, I got her jewelry, but I got her gold for that very reason that it would go up. So she wanted it, she chose it. It was a nice design for her. We have different tastes, but she liked the design. She loved it. 
But it, for me, that wasn't frivolous and it was something that she could wear and yet it's still investment. So that's where the, uh, yeah, the, the, investor, <laughs> the investor side of me comes in. I don't, I mean, when I think of cars as well, I mean, I like vintage cars. So I know for a fact when I do go ahead and I, you know, when I'm able to spend money for myself, I'll be buying vintage cars, but I know they will go up in value. I, I don't like buying cars which will devalue. And so I would never buy a car from a showroom. I would buy a car which is a few months old because it, the de depreciation has already happened. So I already think like that because I think of them as investments and whatever, but that's just my personality type. But I thought that's great. It reminded me of what I just recently did mm. because I'm not, I don't like jewelry. I don't think, I think it's a waste of money to be honest. But she likes it. So I got her something which would I know would go up in value. Yes. And you can. So you can actually incorporate the elements of different personality types to what works best for you. And we all are different. We all need different things for, for us to feel happy and safe and secure. Some people do need that, you know, Louis Vuitton bag or whatever. Even that, by the way, for me, is, is great because I do buy, I do like buying those bags. But because those are also investments because they become vintage and they can, you, they have resale value. Again, yes. so I, whenever I think of buying anything expensive, it's okay. What's the resale value? What's the investment part of it? That's how my mind works. So you can actually do, you can actually incorporate that. that, that thought about and by the way, this is the first time I thought about it this way because before that's just me who I was. I realized that must be part of my personality <laughs> that I really yes. am. Um, and I don't know. I think that that comes in the maverick or um, I don't know ruler. I don't know which one it is. The, the... Yeah, I, I I wonder if it might be like a ruler accumulator combination or some something along those lines. But that's that's how an accumulator would think. Oh, okay. You wouldn't necessarily um, buy something without really understanding what it is that they're buying and why they're buying it. Mm. Uh, so it's the same. The reason why they avoid investing because. Mm for them it's it's a risk and it's a you know it's my money why why should i give it to somebody else to put into an investment what happens if it all goes wrong mm. and that's the biggest argument i have with my partner like i, I teach about how to invest yet he doesn't trust it he, mm. he just he's like oh well, you say that sometimes it can go down i mean yes it does go down but it does go up as well you know you can't you it can't goes, in fairness it goes down on paper you know it, yeah. it, only, it only goes down if you cash out at that moment in time exactly and you, it doesn't matter how many times i say that he still doesn't understand it he listens to his friend who says oh you know you should put money into this this and this like watches like <laughs> okay but they're hard, they're, it, it depends on what you're doing <laughs> they can that's that's the, that, you know having uh, that is a way to make money too because yeah. they become vintage and they, they have a resale value which is higher but again that's probably a lot more riskier than investing the way you're, you're precisely, proposing. Precisely, precisely. So yeah, it's the mind boggles sometimes. But anyway, so that is, a, yeah, you don't have to lose who you are at the core. You can still be who you are, but just borrow the elements of some of the others. Um, you know, it's okay to buy jewellery. It's okay to buy a handbag. But as you said, do it in a way that feels good to you. And And if you are somebody that tends to overspend on these things, Give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to, to have the money set aside for it, but do it in a way that's sustainable so that you also have money for when things don't go so well or Agreed. to pay your electricity bill when it goes up. You know, we can have both. We can have wealth. And that's also a really nice way of feeling less scarce about things as well. Brilliant. And that just reminded me of the fact that my my son has been saving and he's been the same for PS5. And we finally managed to get, we, we couldn't get hold of one even to try if we couldn't. And even now we paid at least a hundred pounds extra than was in the retail value. But still he saved up for it. So it mm -hmm. took time. So it's not going to get anything, you know, it's, I think it's frivolous uh, spending from, from my point of view, but it was something that he wanted and he saved up for. So he put money aside for it. And this is from, you know, obviously I contributed a little bit too, but it's his pocket money that has paid, mm -hmm. uh, you know, two thirds of it which I'm happy with. And this is teaching him about saving and delayed gratification and, you know, what he was going for. And then you finally get something that he's been working for. So you can do, I do agree, you can put money aside if you want to be the celebrity spender, put money aside, allocate money for it. I actually put one of my, um, I do the five bank accounts, uh, you know, three steps to cash flow mastery system, in which we, one of the account is fun account. You spend, yeah. you put money aside specifically to have fun with it. And that yeah. could be buying the handbag, could be buying the PS5, could be whatever, whatever is fun for you. Yeah. And, and that's you know and i think that's an important element otherwise if you suppress your desires you're gonna be miserable yeah and that's you not what to, life is about no you have to be true to yourself you really have to be true to yourself yeah. well, on that note i think we're gonna wrap up thank you so much for today's discussion it's been 
eye-opening for me too. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, Dr. Nikki, tell us how can we connect with you on the internet? Where can we find you? Um, so I, I'm on all the socials. So just look for Female Money Doc and you'll generally find me on TikTok and Instagram and, and all the other places. Come and join my Facebook group, Women Working Towards Money Freedom. And if you're interested in doing the quiz, um, it's right there on my website, thefemalemoneydoctor.com forward slash SMA dash quiz. And there we go. And the links Dr. Nikki has just mentioned will be in the show notes. And if you're watching us on YouTube, then down below in the description section, once again, we'll have the links to her um, or all the links that she mentioned, especially to her website. So do go on to the website. Do check out um, the, the quiz that she just mentioned and find out what is your dominant personality when it comes to money. You'll be, you know, be quite insightful. I've, I've, I've had this discussion about, you know, in this in this uh, episode and it's opened up, giving me some aha moments and opened up some awareness even for me and I'm a money person. Well, um, on that note, thank you so much, Nikki, Dr. Nikki. It's been amazing talking to you. Thank you so much for being such an amazing guest. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you for listening to me and Dr. Nikki today. I will be back with another amazing guest for our Money Tumblebee segment, asking them and finding out how you and I can build a better business. Until the next time we meet, this is Gokhan signing off. Take care and bye for now. <laughs>